So the new law in Wisconsin makes all fourth drunk driving offense a felony. Fifth and sixth time offenders face five year maximum sentencing instead of three. All right, so joining us today to kind of talk about these issues is Representative Jim Ott, who's a Republican from Mequon, and Representative Josh Zepnick, a Democrat from Milwaukee. So, Representative Zepnick, you have a unique perspective to this. Uh, in 2015, you were arrested for drunk driving. Mm -hmm. In 1990, you lost a sister, Jamie Lynn, to a drunk driver killed uh, while she was out riding her bike. And you are also a lawmaker. You are an advocate uh, for stronger sentencing. I sense you're tearing up already about this. Uh, you heard Paula's uh, compelling, powerful uh, testimony here. Do you think Wisconsin's doing enough with drunk driving? Well, my heart goes out to her and her family for obvious reasons. And, um, you know, it, uh, despite my own uh, situation that happened about a year ago, uh, it is something that I continue to take seriously and lived through uh, my family's tragedy, uh, unfortunately, uh, for. Uh, any number of uh, circumstances and conditions, um, I, I came to the realization uh, I'm an alcoholic. And that clouded my judgment in all kinds of ways in my day-to-day -day life, but also in uh, the context of making the decision to get behind the wheel. Uh, we aren't doing enough, obviously, and we keep chipping away at this. Uh, Representative Ott has uh, been taking a leadership role in, in, uh, on the Republican side of the aisle. Uh, we've worked together in previous years when Governor Jim Doyle was uh, in charge and we passed, at that point, uh, one of the first comprehensive changes to drunk driving laws after a period of 20 years. Um, I think one of the struggles we find is that there is a penalty and a law enforcement piece to this mm -hmm. and there is a public health prevention and uh, you know um, alcohol and drug abuse situation. and. Um, the two don't always go together very well, and they both play a significant part of the uh, prevalence of drinking and getting behind the wheel, let alone repeat offenders and causing injury or death. Josh, you, you mentioned something, again, the public health aspect of it and the punitive aspect of it. But do you believe that maybe we need to change our mindset and think of this problem more as a public health crisis as opposed to a more, um, Let's punish and deal with the consequences later. Well, I mean, I'll let Jim talk, but to be honest with you, at, at the point of repeat offenses, um, or if at any point, first or second, or anything above, there's been an injury or death. I mean, that's where you, we really need to be putting our foot down, probably harder than we have. In On the repeat offenders. Yeah, and, and you know, Representative Ott and I agree, you know, once you get to your third time, you, you got a real problem there as an individual in terms of your behavior. And we got a real problem there in terms of putting the public uh, safety at risk. I think I've I felt this way before I uh, had my own sit, uh, arrest and I felt this way at, since then. Um, it might, it's my belief that a first time offense uh, is, is the right time to enter somebody into a treatment plan, which is what I did, mm -hmm. and have an ignition interlock device installed, which is what I did. And, um, uh, that to me is a good way to go about things as well. Um, well, let me jump in there, Representative Bob, let me ask you about this. So is the fourth offense, the change here in the law, is that a baby step or a big step? And let's talk about first offenders as well. We are the only state right. in the nation that does not make it a criminal offense. I, th I think, Charles, I'd call it a significant step because uh, it, it does move the ball in the right direction, I think, and it certainly does increase the, significantly increases the penalties possible for fifth and above as well. Um, you know, uh, Shannon used the word punish, and I guess in advocating for tougher penalties, I, I don't think is as much in terms of punish as deterrence. Mm -hmm. And I do think now that somebody's got three offenses, they reoffend again, no matter when it is, they're going to be a felon. You, you don't want to go there. And I think that that's a deterrent effect that, that I look for when I'm putting these laws forward. And I, I recognize that there's a public health issue, there's an addiction issue involved mm -hmm. in, in repeat drunk driving as well. But if a person has a problem with an addiction and they get behind the wheel, their problem becomes everybody else's problem. The but, but I will say this though, uh, when you say addiction, we don't look at alcoholism as an addiction as much as we do look at the heroin and opiate problem as an addiction. And Josh brings up a very good point. Alcoholism is a sickness. So if we have people who are repeat offenders, second time should be the, the time where we say enough is enough. We're putting people's lives at risk. Right, and, and actually I think down the road at some point, 
I, I would like to see third offense be considered a felony. Is that uh, the next frontier for you then? Uh, that's maybe not going to happen this session. One of the problems we have uh, is, is every time, I've, I've brought this law up a couple of times, right. mm -hmm. a third offense of felony, and we get this huge fiscal note from the Department of Corrections that's saying they're going to have to build new prisons to house all the people. My feeling is if it has a deterrent effect, there won't be as many convictions, and you won't have to build the new prisons. You'll have less drunk driving. The roads are safer. That's the goal. I agree with him, and uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think at the third, having gone through a first-time offense myself, mm -hmm. uh, I will say that well, I first, I've quit drinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm in Very a recovery good. program, uh, I, I, and uh, and I knew for about a good year or two, at least, prior to that arrest, that I needed to get help. But uh, by time number three, I mean, you've already gone before uh, the system uh, several times. You have seen your license get taken away. You have seen your insurance go up. And so there is a penalty there, at least, that you pay. It's time to wake up. Right. We're going to have to leave it at that. We appreciate both of you coming in. We want to let you know we did invite the Tavern League of Wisconsin to be part of our conversation, but they were not able to make it. We did get, we did get a statement from the executive director, Peter Madlin, and this is what he had to say. We have and will continue to support legislation aimed at high BAC blood alcohol content offenders and repeat offenders, as well as treatment programs at the local level to address the addiction issues. Over the last 10 years, alcohol-related fatalities in Wisconsin have declined nearly 40%.